I love falconry. I have been a falconer since 2003 and I hunt every single year because there's nothing else like it. Huh, Jet? We decided to put this series together to try to help you get into falconry too. If you're interested, leave me a comment down below. Owls, so majestic. Look how beautiful they are. They are built to hunt and kill, silent and deadly. However, they suck for falconry. And not because <clears throat> they don't have the equipment necessary. I mean, look at the size of these talons. I mean, that is some massive equipment. And you see this beak? I mean, that beak is made to tear up and kill. But the reason that they are not that great for falconry is because they don't make a move until the timing is just right. And we humans, we don't like that. So I much prefer the Harris Hawks where if something runs, moves, they're on it. That's the kind of hunting I like to do. So this morning we're gonna go out and our Harris Hawks have been molting their new feathers in all year. All these body feathers on the Harris Hawks are brand new and they are a little wild. So we're gonna go check their equipment, figure out which Hawks we wanna use for this hunting season and we're gonna call today, day one. Make sure you don't get too close to that fence there because they'll reach through and get you. The lemurs will. These in here, this is our breeding pair. Uh, that's a male and a female Harris hawk. Over here, we've got a, a male Harris hawk. He's an older bird. And then this pen over here has three of our hunting hawks. We've got Jet, which is the one in the middle, Blackjack, and then we've got Banshee. Banshee's a female, and those two over there are males. Okay, so um, this is pretty straightforward. I'm just gonna go in there and chase the hawks until I can catch it. <laughs> so what's amazing about Harris hawks is they're social in nature and they are the only species of hawk that lives in a family unit. And so typically the, the female is the matriarch and she almost always has two males that are subordinate to her. And so in a family unit, you might have eight birds. There'd be an, an alpha female, two subordinate males, and then four to six young of different age. And they all hunt as a pack like a wolf pack. They'll catch squirrels and rabbits and jackrabbits, pheasant, quail, just about anything that you flush up, they will catch. The other thing that's nice about them with falconry is they accept you as a team member because they're very social team oriented. Not only are they very capable flyers, they're very good in the woods because they have this long tail and that makes, makes it really easy for them to turn sharp corners. See how this is going. Kind of got my eye on him. So there's a couple of different pieces of equipment that we look for. Um, one, this is his federal ID number his federal band number. Two, this is an anklet, and we wanna make sure that these anklets are still pliable and that they're not gonna tear. And the anklet's just made out of either leather that's been saturated with oil, or it's made out of biothane, which is a synthetic product. And then we have this bell that's attached by a bewit. So this bird's equipment looks really good. And since I got him, we're just gonna keep him. We'll go dress him up. So we're gonna call this day one for this bird. And this bird's name is Jet. His, his talons are looking exceptionally sharp and pointy. I personally don't wanna get hit with these talons, 
because they are literally razor sharp. Is this like a standard hold for? Yeah, this is, we call this the baby hold or the football hold. And uh, it's, it's, it's amazing because once we get out and we get hunting, um, when we go into colder climates, like in the, the Northwest, like upper Utah, even Northern Kansas, it's really, really cold. The Harris Hawks are a desert animal and they like the, the warmth better. And so when we're hunting and the males get too cold, they'll come to me and I'll tuck them up like this and I'll keep them warm when it's cold until we flush a rabbit and then I'll just throw them at the rabbit. It's got a kangaroo hanging out. Yeah, old Tyson the kangaroo. He's just chilling. He likes the fan. That's why he's laying there. Well, Tyson came from a herd down in DeSoto, about 30 miles south of here. And his mother had twins. And the twins almost never survive. Both of them don't. And so they pulled one. And we got him as a bottle baby. Fed him on a bottle. And now he's just, uh, he guards the chickens. And Tyson is a giant red kangaroo. He'll get taller than me one day. He'll probably be seven foot. These are Jesses. And the one that I'm putting on him right now is called a bullet Jess. And so basically it's the part that attaches to the leash so that we can control his movements when we're indoors, which makes it a lot easier to keep a hair sock when you can control them. One of the first steps in falconry for day one is to figure out exactly how much the bird weighs. Um, this bird is super fat and you can tell he's fat because his kill, that's this part right here, his kill is plump, like very plump, plump. Like I can't even feel his kill. And so we weigh them just to get a base weight to figure out where they start. And so this bird weighs 792 grams and he flies at 550 grams. So he's got to lose, you know, a lot of weight. 792. This right here is just scared. That's what this is. He's like, he's been allowed to just fly around all summer and molt in his new feathers and sharpen his talons. And he's like, vaguely remembers people but not really, but you'll be amazed what he'll look like here in about two weeks. So right now we're gonna put him in this jump box. Um, with a new bird, you're concerned about keeping their feathers intact because they're used to being able to fly around and now you're gonna restrict them. And so you don't want them to jack their feathers all up, jumping around and bouncing all over the place. So you need a leash that's Gives him a little bit of slack, but yet is tight enough so that he keeps those feathers in place. There's a couple of different things. One, we track the day, their weight, and what food, if any food is given to them. And then we track the temperature, what the temperature is for the day. Um, the temperature is important because with Harris Hawks, the colder it is, the more choleric burn they have because they shiver a lot. We'll pay close attention to how much we feed them by weight and 24 hours later, how much they weigh. And so we start watching that and we develop a pattern so we can figure out how many calories a day they're burning. And then we put them into a caloric de deficiency so that they're burning more calories, just a few more calories per day than they're actually consuming. And that way they start eating their own body fat little bit by little bit and then we bring them down to where they're interested in us again and so we'll from that point build their muscle mass up and so they'll they'll drop down in weight and then they'll build back up in weight until they get to a good hunting weight dead deer it's it, it literally is going to take us longer to get it put into the brio properly 
than it is for me to actually go pick it up and remove it. However, I don't want to do that until I know I'm going to get paid. Oh dear. Oh dear.